In early 2021, a company by the name of Iron Neo launched a Kickstarter on Indiegogo. This raised over $2 million in funding to realize the production of their brand new gaming handheld. This essentially was a gaming PC in a Nintendo Switch style form factor. They even made lots of references to this comparison on their Indiegogo page. This handheld featured a Ryzen 5 4500U processor and integrated AMD Radeon graphics. These are mid-tier mobile processors with low power consumption. Ideal for a decent enough performance for handheld gaming. It had 16GB of DDR4X RAM and a 1200x800 7-inch touchscreen IPS display. The Iron Neo came in anywhere between $900 to $1,300 for the Iron Neo Pro, which featured a Ryzen 7 4800U processor. Over one year later, we have the latest instalment to the Iron Neo line, the Iron Neo Next, featuring an 8-core 16-thread Ryzen 7 5800U Cezanne U APU, which is of course based on the Zen 3 architecture. What is he on about? Is this thing a threat to the Steam Deck? Is it going to wipe out the handheld gaming market? After all, why limit yourself to only Nintendo Switch games when you can play those and every other console ever using emulation? Let's take a look. Big thank you to the Brilliant company that sponsored this Brilliant video called Brilliant. Brilliant is a website and app that has over 60 different courses with hands-on interactive content so you can understand maths, science, computer science, all of that kind of stuff. Brilliant's main focus is on interactive learning. Take repairing for example, I learned repairing by just trying it. Interactive learning is six times more efficient than watching lecture style videos. I didn't do that well at school. Unfortunately, I suffered quite badly from classroom environments. So being able to learn from the comfort of your own home means you can learn at your own pace. Join the millions of people already learning on Brilliant with a special offer just for my subscribers. Head to brilliant.org forward slash retro future to get started for free. My name is Elliot, welcome to the Retro Future. Let's take a look at the Iron Neo next. Now, Iron Neo have sent this to me for free. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. It's not sponsored by Iron Neo. I've not received any money from these guys to, uh, to make this video. And it's not gonna be sent to them for review before I upload it. Explore the future. That's a nice little, uh, a nice little slogan there. It's off center though. Is it just me or is that slightly off center? Okay, so here we go. On the right hand side, we have 13 and a half centimeters to the end of the text. And then on the left hand side, we've actually got 15 centimeters. So it is in fact off center. And then at the bottom, we've got nine and a half centimeters yet at the top we've actually got 10. And I mean it's obvious why you should be watching this channel because we really do talk about the important things. But let's have a look and let's explore the future. Ooh, please put on gloves to open. Very fancy, very unnecessary. Right, let's put this one on as well. Bang, I think I might put them on upside down. There we go, right, we've got our gloves on. Let's take this off. Ooh, look at that, a big plastic box. I wonder if my bin man's gonna take that. I haven't got a very good grip of it because it's now incredibly slippy. In fact, that is actually impossible to now get out. Look at this beautiful ASMR unboxing. Oh, I've ripped the box, oh. Oh, it's upside down. There we go. Look at that. Wow, it's very nice. It's very nice. I genuinely don't know how I'm going to bin that, though, because, yeah, it's a, quite a big thing. Can I put that in the bin? Should I put it in the bin? I don't care. Explore the future. And we've got this really nice piece of sort of card here that has a big sort of ellipse there. I don't know what that is. Iron Neo next in a sort of a rainbowy chrome text it's it's all very premium i should say at this point this device costs one thousand three hundred dollars yeah i thought i'd just get it, get that out of the way this thing is the average monthly salary uh in the united kingdom so 
it's quite a lot of money. <laughs> um, I think this is the prototype as well. I'm not sure how yours would look if you did buy one. And from what I know, I believe they're limited to 300. Not sure if that is the case or not, but I shall confirm it on the screen now. We have this small little chip, which actually has my name on it, which is really cool. Hey. A microfiber cloth. That's quite nice. Thank you very much for that, Ioneo. And we've got a piece of card which says various different things in various different languages and some more card here and more stuff. So then here is the final thing, the actual unit itself. And yes, it does very much look like what you'd sort of imagine the Nintendo Switch Pro to look like. It's a bit bigger, it's nice, it's got big joysticks um, and massive trigger buttons. And by the way, we are gonna touch base on this a little bit later on in the video, but these are sort of a magnetic based mechanism, uh, which means you're not gonna have things like joystick drift. Uh, it's not gonna deteriorate over time. It's a very, very nice feel as well. Unbelievably smooth, snaps back into the middle with just complete certainty it's just lovely and these triggers as well are so nice so soft and certain but yet delicate and and sort of comforting i don't know it's a very beautiful thing they've gotten that perfect right let's have a look what else we've got in the box we've got another piece of foam uh more stuff to go in the bin and then we have the final thing Oh yeah, I'm missing the charger because I have been charging this thing. Spoiler alert, I've been using this thing for the past five days. Uh, and I would say out of those five days, I've probably actually played on it for about two hours. And the reason why is because it's taken me so long to set everything up. But we're going to get into that in just a minute. So we've got some uh, OTG adapters, which are quite nice little things. I think they're made out of metal, actually. That's really handy for my Macintosh. Two of those. Uh, we've got different adapters for the charger. You know, you've got European and North American or whatever. Uh, we've also got the USB cable in this little box. And then finally, a complete waste of money, but you know, they've included it if I can ever get it out. So this tiny little thing is for the card, I believe. I mean, it's nice enough. It is, it's quite cool, but I mean, yeah. It's nice enough, isn't it? One thing I just want to say is, I mean, look at the absurd amount of packaging that has come with this thing. I get that this is a review unit, but I feel guilty chucking this all in the bin. It's just such a waste. I mean, I am going to put it all in the recycling, but yeah, geez, that is a, uh, an absurd amount of rubbish. So, here is the thing itself. Now, let me show you something quite cool. On the back, it has my name and it also says 018, which I believe means it's gonna be, you know, 18 out of 300 or something. You've got a nice big fan there on the back, as well as another big one on the top as well, and I think also so on the bottom. This thing's got a lot of airflow. Obviously, it is a Windows 10 computer. Um, you've got a USB-C connection on the bottom, as well as one on the top, which is nice. You've got your volume buttons there. That's your power switch. We'll come back to that in just a minute. We've got a D-pad, obviously, action buttons, uh, a couple of sort of exclusive Iron Neo buttons, which do various things, which I'll show you in a bit. Uh, and you've got some multitasking buttons and a menu sort of button here. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. It's a very, very nice looking thing. I actually really, really like it. In terms of build quality, it feels great. Now, remember, this is the prototype. It does feel great. The one thing I would say, a little bit creaky. Some of the plastic is just a little bit on the creek side. I mean, as I said, that might be just because it's the review unit, but um, it is a little bit creaky. And when you're paying $1,300 for something, I don't know. I don't know if I would expect it to be a little bit more solid. I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw it, I thought it was made of metal, but it's not. It is made of plastic. Okay, I found it. Right, so hardware information. This is a bit more detail about the device. So CPU is an AMD Ryzen, we've already done that. GPU is an AMD Ryzen, Raiden graphics video memory 3 gigabytes. Monitor is a 1280 by 860 hertz 7 inch screen. The motherboard is an Ioneo Next. The storage is two terabytes and the RAM, 16 gigabytes of RAM. So there we have it, that's all the details. Now, this right here is IA space. This, if you like, is your sort of UI. Um, you obviously can get out of that by pressing this big button and then you've just got your Windows 10 desktop where you can do various different things, but 
once you've got it all set up, theoretically you should be able to just do everything games related from within here. Now, I would advise for setting this up that you plug in a couple dongles and you connect a mouse and you connect a keyboard and I would also suggest plugging it into a monitor and that is just going to make setting this whole thing up so much easier and then you can pick it up and go and sit on your sofa and boom. Now what is this thing? This right here is a nice casual way to play computer games whether that's Steam games, whether that's emulation, whatever it might be. It's a nice casual way to do that because typically computer gaming is a bit more of a sweaty thing that you're sat at your desk doing. So to be able to pick this thing up and sit on a sofa with a handheld sort of joystick pad games controller thing either side, it feels really nice and it is very high quality. Now the other thing I like about it is because it's Windows based, it's not Linux or some proprietary Chinese thing, it feels like it's going to last a lot longer and it also feels like it's going to age a little bit better as well than some of these other ones. Um, I might be wrong with that, but provided the build of it is actually quite good, the software is obviously a very reliable software. So I'm really, really excited about it. Um, you can see I've got some games set up here, so I'm now gonna go through and play a bunch of different games just to show you its power, and then I'm gonna give you my opinion, talk about its flaws, and uh, advise whether or not I think you should get one. Let's have a look at some games. So there we have it, the Aya Neo Next. It's got a really nice fingerprint sensor on the top of the device as well, which it's not recognizing my finger right now because I just ate a pizza and my fingers are greasy. But yeah, it's a very beautiful thing. As you can see by the gameplay footage, it runs very well. Uh, now, what you have to remember is the emulators aren't designed by Aya Neo or Windows for that matter. The emulators are a dev thing that people in the community have put together to make the games run on the not correct hardware. So it's a very complicated thing. And during that process, certain things have been workarounds and they're not going to work as well, obviously, as they would on the actual hardware. And so, yeah, you're going to get things like weird sound, you're going to get little graphical glitches. Things aren't necessarily going to work. You are going to have to spend a lot of time using the uh, the inbuilt settings in the emulators to map it to these controllers. Um, 
It is not the easiest thing, and I'm definitely not gonna tell you to go out and buy one if you're not very good with doing that sort of stuff. I'm not, I, it took me hours, and even once I thought I've established an understanding of how to use it, Weird, buggy things happen where I can't get out of games. I don't know how to do that. Um, you know, if you're not near a keyboard, and also you don't want to keep plugging in a keyboard because you don't have to do that with a Nintendo Switch. You're not going to have to do that with a Steam Deck. What we have here is not a console. This is a computer with some Joy-Cons essentially added onto the side of it. So there is going to have to be a lot of user input to actually make this thing work well. Um, you can pretty much guarantee that all the Steam games are going to run seamlessly. At the end of the day, it's a high-end PC, but when it comes to the emulation, which is really what I think a lot of people would buy this for, um, because otherwise you could just, you know, play the games on your computer, you, you want to have that handheld experience, though, if you're going to play old retro games and you need a nice tactile um, sort of set of buttons and joysticks and all that sort of stuff and trigger buttons to make the games run properly. Now, you could obviously just buy yourself a Bluetooth controller and connect it to your computer and then just play all of the games on your computer. And that is gonna save you a fortune. But I don't necessarily think that that doesn't mean that there isn't a place for this in the world. There are gonna be some very hardcore people, maybe even game devs who are gonna to want to play on an actual handheld device. And my goodness, does this thing do a beautiful job at that. It's a beautiful thing. I mean, the headphone jack, the speakers sound great. I think I did an update and then the speakers got really good on this thing. Uh, the fingerprint sensor is lovely. It's got different sort of touch sensitive um, gestures or whatever you can do to it to, to do various different things. I mean, it's stunning. The, the magnetic mechanism behind the joysticks as well is something that I believe in the future is gonna be implemented in a lot of different handhelds. Now, obviously, the Steam Deck is coming out soon. The Nintendo Switch has been out for ages. Is this thing going to be a competitor, a rival to those two things? And you know what? I don't necessarily know that for $1,300, this one is going to be the one. But, you know, components for PCs and all that sort of stuff it typically is going down in price, uh, but the power is going up. And that has been happening for a very, very long time in the computer space. So maybe in a few years' time, this sort of power device might only cost three or four hundred pounds. And in that case, I think this does have a real chance of being a competitor to things like Nintendo and Steam making these uh, this, this new device or Valve, whoever it is. It's a very interesting one. I, I would love to hear your thoughts. So please let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you very much for sending it to me. Thank you, Brilliant, for sponsoring this video. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. If there's any other questions that you have about this thing, pop them in the comments and I'll do my very best to get back to you. I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye.